Welcome folks, this is Will KMAC Vintage. Um, I have to remake a video that I did earlier that I posted up on YouTube, which was the SC30 video ROM. Um, I made a new scene and I forgot to add my microphone to that scene. So anytime that I went to show you the SC desktop and the application, you could not hear what I was saying. So I will remake the video and we will I'll make it a bit better I hope and show you what it all is anyway uh, Saturday morning it is right now almost 10 30 here in Cayman Islands 80 degrees nice weather outside we had a little bit of rain this morning which was kind of nice so um, I do have my gardener outside doing work in my yard so if you hear noise coming from outside I'm sorry well he's pretty much done mowing and all that so Yes, we have to do yard work year year round. During the winter, we don't get a break <clears throat> because grass here continues to grow regardless, no matter what. So anyway, what this video is about is, um, as you know, I do the SE30 reloaded boards, and I buy and or get from other people also for me to move for them, reload for them. Um, I'm, I may get video board, I'm, I may get SE30 reloaded boards to do that are missing some chips. And one of them that could be missing because it's close to the battery is the video ROM right there. Okay, now this one here, the, the reloaded, the donor board I used for me to make this one for actually Ron did not come with the with the actual video chip so video ROM chip so that's how I knew I would have to do something for me to make them or do something with them my do something with them myself so um, knowing that I discussed with some other people and in in this in in this hobby what chip this is and what I can use to make my own and if I can make my own and it turns out that I can so the original chip that is there is an Apple custom ROM chip and that custom ROM chip is usually this one Okay, it's a 341-0650-A. This is the ROM chip. Um, they can go bad quite often because, uh, see, the legs will wear out because they get corroded. Even though it's sitting in a socket to begin with and it is higher up, it can still get damaged. This one is a bit weak, so... Um, so this one then was there. I tested the board with it. It does work and everything. So, but I need, I need to make my own. So what do I need for me to make my own? Um, first thing I need is I need a programmer. And I use, uh, sorry, I use this one for it. This is the GQ 4x4. has a USB input and it has external power input, which I will need this for me to program these chips. Okay, so without due course, let's plug this in. Okay. Software is seen and everything. It's there. See, there's coming up. Okay. Now to yeah, let's go back to the scene itself. Let's go back to here. Um, here, I need to tell it what chip I'm using. So these chips that I'm using are the AM2764. They're not the 2764A or anything. It just says AM2764. Now, in here, if I type in... Two seven six four. 
you'll see that I get 2764, then I get a 2764 21 volts, I get a 2764 12.7 volts, I get a PLCC32, but that's an A, I get AM2764 A, and all these other ones, okay? I tried most of these, I tried all of these here, it's, don't use an A, don't use any of these other ones, okay? This chip boils down to being the first one, just the plain old 2764. When I do a select, it's going to download some stuff and check some things. They're there, and it's showing me here how I have to put this chip into the socket. So I'm not all the way up to the top. Okay, I start at pin 7. So I'm going to... I'm not going to put in a blank or that right now. Right now, I want to put in the actually original. So I'm going to put in the original that way. Here we go. Okay, so down on the bottom, like I see this, and then lock it in place. Oh. Open it. Lock it in place. There it is. Okay. So now that's in. And all I want to do right now is I want to read this chip. So I'm going to come here and click on the read. If not, I can go to commands, and I can choose read. Okay, but this is also read here, this picture with the R. So I'm going to read that chip. Now I can go to my buffer, and there it is. There is the image. I just, I just dumped this, and there's not much code in it. I find there's more acknowledgments, what's kind of funny. Here we can see Mac SE30 Engineering uh, Hall of Fame, video software by David Fong, CPU software by Bob Harold, and the original cast of system software um, blah 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 and so forth and uh, I did built into the ROM and for some uh, I've never seen this anywhere displayed in the system so anyway I guess it's just in the ROM and then the rest is blank really there's not much in here anyway so once I have it then you can do a save and then that will save it to a file I already have this as a file you see it there SE video dump bin and so I don't really need it so I can technically clear this buffer. The buffer is all cleared now like I never read anything. I can go load and I can load my actual original and I get the same thing. And see, there, 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 there it is. So I have the 2764 in there. Um, so this is the original one, so I'm going to take that out, okay, now I have a blank chip here, and let me sh switch scenes, okay, so here's my blank chip, okay, and I'm going to put that in the same way, okay, now I need my bench power, so I'm going to grab this, I'm going to plug that in, Turn on my bench power. I have my bench power set at 12 volts, 3 amps, but I really don't even need that because this thing doesn't pull that much amperage. Um, right now it's pulling 11.81 volts and 0.118 amps. Okay, so it's not pulling much at all, but they say use actually that setting. So anyway, so let's go back to the message log here. Oh, I need to switch scenes first. Okay, so I was on the buffer. I'm going to go back to the message log. And we see how this is set in. Now, there is programming speed here. I don't like to program these older chips too fast. I'm going to set this to actually zero. This is going to say three, but that's fine. Because really, two is a, is is the one. So this is three. So one, two, three. I guess this is four, and that's five. But anyway, so programming speed is zero, which is normal, it's slower, and that's probably a bit better. Okay. So now I want to check and see if this chip is blank. So I'm going to click here on this B, blank check, and it should be blank. This is a chip that I recently erased, so I'm hoping it was blank. I recently tried to program it, and it wouldn't program, so we're going to try it anyway. <coughs> okay, so that's in there now. Um, so now I, and I have the image loaded, so all I'm going to do is click on Write. And now that's going to start writing. If I look at the desk view, you'll see that I have VPP and VCC on. 
this is here writing writing okay writing buffer we're gonna verify and elapsed time and the chip is programmed that's it it's done if I do a blank check now it's gonna come up and say that it's not blank see it's, it has got data if I erase my buffer let's actually clear out the buffer let's go read this and there's the data coming in look the same data that I recently had in the buffer is now in the chip so this chip is ready okay so we go to my desk view I can now turn off my bench power turn that off uh, put away this cable just hang it up here You know, as much as I try to organize and keep the work area clean and nice, in no time it becomes trashed. Okay, we take out this chip. I'm going to put away this programmer. Okay. I need to bend these legs a little bit for that this ROM to go in the socket. All right. Uh, notch towards me this way and a chip that I have not had in the socket okay there we go and it's in all right I don't have memory in this board yet so let's put these in these are brand new 30 pin sockets. And I love these sockets, they're so nice. It looks like it's the same manufacturer that makes the ROM, the ROM sim. So I might go back and buy the rest that these people have. Okay, so memory is in. Let's put in a ROM. I had this board all ready for me to pack. Plug in the speaker. Blue SCSI. Keyboard. Power. And we have everything and we're ready to go. So let me switch to my other view here. Because here's where you can see the monitor. So now, if this comes up, this will boot up like normal. There's tone. And there's my image, nice and clear. I have my pointer. I have my mouse, see? And it's booting up already. So this is with a made ROM. Not the original. Not the one from Mac. but one that I made. And it works, see, there we are. See, so we made a ROM, that simple. Um, the advantage was that I had an original one that I could do a dump on. Um, the images I found out on the net are um, not actually correct. Well, two of them that I found were not, were, they were not correct. I don't know why they were not correct, but, um, maybe, let me, let me check one thing here, because that was the thing was that when I opened it, it would not load. Let me select the chip first. Select. All right, let's load the image. Bin bin this one. You see, when I load that one, it tells me that the data size exceeds the size of the device. Data file has been has been uh, truncated. I look at the buffer. It's just garbage in there. 
nothing like it was was originally. Uh, let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so uh, let me exit the program. We'll just start brand new. That way you can see. Yeah, I do not have a programmer attached to it right now. That's fine. Did not get response from program or demo only. That's fine. Okay, device. And this is a 2764. We'll select that. We'll go and load the image. This is the image that I downloaded from Braun. Okay, so you see it says it's the right image. I go open, look. See, and when I go look at the buffer, that's what is in there. Compared to what is in it when I read mine, see, we got text, we got all sorts of different information. So something is not right with this image. And that's why I was having some actually trouble with it last night and it would not work when I was trying this. So here we are with a modified, well, a self-made ROM. So it's working. Okay. My, my next actually reloaded board I'm going to do, I'm going to use the PLC sockets for the ROM instead of a SIM socket. Now, I cannot have both installed on the machine because one overlaps the other. There's some pluses and minuses to that, okay? Once I do that with that board, that board cannot use a SIM. So you can take a Rominator and put in there, but you can still pop out those chips and you can program them. So you can still do your own ROMs and so forth, but it is, it is just chip-based instead of a SIM. <clears throat> so I can still put in ROMs that are bigger, chips that are bigger, EPROMs, and still make a disk image and everything like you can with a SIM but it's just PLC because these SIM sockets are getting harder to find. Okay, and and what is on them anyway? P, a P, a PLC sockets, okay? I mean, it is like this. Okay, this is all it is. All right, this is the, the, the these are the sockets that get put on here and the chips that and the chips that actually go in. Okay, so I can technically well, not on this board because the, the ROMs for the reloaded, you have to do a byte swap, or a, sorry, bit swap. You have to actually reverse the lines or something like something like that. So, but yes, you can, I'm going to try it with them and actually see. Because although I do have some actually SIM sockets, I don't have too many and they're hard to find. These are 64 pin SIM, SIM, SIM sockets and they are hard to find, very hard. So... Um, unless I can find a good source and I can buy another 300, like what I did with the actually uh, memory SIM sockets. So, but anyway, that's it for this video. Um, you see there that I have this running, um, and it works just as normal. There's no difference. So I can pop out this. I'm going to erase this chip back. You see, if I put in the actually original chip, which is what I'm going to put in now, I mean, you can see that I am not BSing you. This is the original. So we're going to take that one and throw this one in here. There we are. Let me turn on. I get the same thing. There's a screen coming up, the pointer booting. See, so I get the same thing. So those I got three chips there to erase. So I'm still waiting for some cargo that I need to find out if it's here yet. Well, if it's available for me to pick up yet. So while this is booting, so anyway, um, so yeah, it's it's nice and simple and easy to make these ROMs. Um, but you do need, um, oh, good, I can go pick it up. It is ready. Um, the, 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 why did I not get the email? The um, chip, you just need to know what actually chip you need to use. 
and once you have that then you then you know then you can program it um, the TL866 2 plus programmer will not do these chips wonder if I went to my junk um, because apparently it does not provide the correct voltage or something no anyway so so you can you have to use one that you can that can inject additional voltage in um, there is a way that you can technically mod this um, I've seen some people do it they'll take the chip and they'll put it in now in here it's got to go in the actually right way all the way up but they'll bend out pin 1 and they'll connect um, 12 volts or 20 or 21 volts to it from their bench power and then they'll also connect ground to 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 the last pin and put it in just like that so one is bent out but uh, but the last pin here ground pin is still connected into the socket and is also getting ground injected which is fine it you can do that and then you can program it um, there is no 2764 there's no plain 2764 on the TL-A66 plus uh, two plus but there is another chip that you can use that is the same type that's the same it just has different voltage but because you're actually injecting the voltage it really doesn't matter so if I'm not mistaken I think you can you can pick the actually AM 2764A even though the voltage will be different um, the voltage is not being injected by the actually programmer it's being injected directly from your bench power supply and it will program so there is a mod for that. Look it up on YouTube. It is on there. That's how I found it. So you can find it yourself too. And we can see here that this is working. This is the original chip. I uh, where okay yeah all right. So this is the original chip working. So I'm gonna shut this back down. I'm going to take out that original chip because I'm going to hold on to this original chip. The board is going to get the one that I programmed. So here's the one that I programmed that I'm going to throw in there. There we go. Doom. Let's just make sure it works. We got chime. The video comes up, it comes up, I'll turn it right off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we are we are good to go. Um I'm sorry I had to actually remake this video. At least now in take two, it's a bit better. So if you all like this video, please do a thumbs up for me. A comments appreciate it. Um I'm sure this is gonna be beneficial for a lot of people that need to make their own ROM. And so anyway. Um, I have to get ready to go to town. I have to go pick up that piece of cargo that arrived. Um, it is a... Um, I have a MacBook Pro for someone that I need to swap out the screen, so I'm going to be doing that. I'll probably make a video of it, although it is not vintage. I'm sorry. It is still some work, and it's neat to do, and I like to record it so that I have it. All right, everyone. See you all later. Take care. Bye-bye.